When the liner Ranji Toto docks at Southampton Ocean Terminal, there's a family greeting for Dr. Vivian Fuchs and his wife, which is just an intimate curtain raiser for the tremendous public welcome to come for the conqueror of the Antarctic. Among those waiting ashore are his son Peter, age 17, his 22-year-old daughter Hilary, and the son-in-law he has never met, geography teacher Howard Brooks. Dr. Fuchs radioed his permission for the marriage last year from his Antarctic base. Another first-time meeting is between Sergeant Peter Weston, RAF, and his son, also Peter. All this homecoming, of course, is a bit rough on the members of the party who haven't got any family here. In the streets of Southampton, Dr. Fuchs and his second-in-command, Mr. Davis Weston, have their first taste of what the ordinary people of Britain think of their achievement. Modest men, they are genuinely surprised at this tremendous reception. They thought they were just scientists doing a job of work. On the scientific angle, Dr. Fuchs is asked what he thinks was the outstanding result of the expedition. Well, it's a little invidious, of course, to pick on any particular thing, but perhaps what the uh, more unusual and most interesting might be the uh, tracing of the uh, rock surface beneath the great ice cap, which everybody's known about so long, and to find that uh, there are mountain ranges underneath the ice, and to find that the pole is over a deep basin 8,000 feet down. I mean, the ice is about 8,000 feet yes. thick. Asked if future research should be on an international basis, Dr. Fuchs says... I think uh, myself that whatever system does come into being, uh, then we have to ensure that work goes on there because it is of great importance from a weather point of view to the Southern Hemisphere, and there is a great deal to be learnt about so large an area.